Today's question, we have been asked this a hundred times from all around the world. Can you overstrip Amy? Should you leave some H2S in your lean aiming to prevent corrosion? If I leave H2S in my lean aiming, will I form a protective iron sulfide film? There's a lot of people out there that tell you, yes, leave H2S in the lean aiming. It protects you against corrosion. And then people wonder, like, how come I left H2S in the aiming and yet I still had corrosion? Okay, doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. No, you cannot overstrip aiming. It's a myth, okay? If someone tells you don't overstrip the amine, it means they do not understand what an iron sulfide film is, they do not understand how an iron sulfide film is formed, and they definitely don't understand what an iron sulfide film protects you against. So in this episode of the Experts Network, finally, we have many, many requests for this. It's a pretty passionate topic of mine in particular, is the overstripping of amine. We're going to talk about why not to do it, how iron sulfides work, and hopefully get some clarity on this very controversial subject. Welcome to the Experts Network. Welcome back to the Experts Network. My name is Ben Spooner. I'm a process engineer with Amin Experts. And today's topic is uh, it's focusing on a case study that we've been dealing with on a foul lean rich exchanger. But the kind of the root of the topic is can you overstrip amine or should you purposely leave some H2S in your lean amine to possibly prevent corrosion? All right, it's a, I guess, somewhat controversial topic as there's a lot of different opinions on it. Our, ours is not opinion. We go based on scientific fact. That's a big difference between us and a lot of this other industry of people that their goal is to sound like they know what they're doing, but they don't actually know what they're doing. So let's delve into the topic of iron sulfide. Okay, iron sulfide, kind of an umbrella term. It it just means any ratio of iron to sulfur, okay? Now, some of these types of iron sulfide are good and useful in our amine plant, some are not. The three main types of iron sulfide that we see are mckinnoite, pyrotite, and pyrite. And the difference between these three is that ratio of iron to sulfur. You hear the term protective iron sulfide film okay or passivating film some people call it uh, a lot to know whether it really is passive or not it's actually not that passive but um, as far as preventing further h2s attack goes the one that we want is this guy right here it's called pyrotite okay pyrotite works to prevent future h2s related corrosion because it is non-porous and it's non-soluble so once it forms on the piping wall, it stays there and creates a barrier between the amine and the acids within the amine and the piping wall itself. The other type of iron sulfide that would form a good protective film is this guy right here. These are This is pyrite. Now pyrite is, uh, what you're seeing right here is a whole bunch of flakes that fell to the bottom of a regenerator when we cleaned it and opened it up. Um, uh, pyrite, very, very hard and solid. You can go hiking through a mountain, you'll probably be walking on pyrite. It's found all throughout nature. Non-porous, non-soluble, okay? It would also make a, a good protective film if it were to form on your vessel walls. The one that you don't want and unfortunately, the one we see the most in lean aiming is this guy right here. This is McKinnowite. Okay, this is McKinnowite. Now, actually, this picture is of what we would typically call black shoe polish, which is a mixture of primarily McKinnowite, but it's held together by some kind of glue like substance, something of high viscosity, usually anti foam, uh, but could also be amine degradation products, hydrocarbons, you know, as I said, anything of, of high viscosity. Uh, what McKinnowite is, is the initial formation of iron sulfide. It's the uh, where the, the ratio is mostly iron, just a little bit of sulfur. So the H2S has just started to attack 
the piping walls and it forms this mckinnonite. But the problem is it doesn't form a protective film because it's very porous and it's also somewhat soluble. So it forms on the piping wall and then the amine just washes it away again. That hardly call is, is uh, considered a protective film. And this is what happens when you leave H2S in your lean amine. Now, the difference, whether you will form mckinnonite, pyrotite, or pyrite, has to do with two main things in an amine system. Two main things. Uh, it's going to be the temperature and the H2S content, or partial pressure of H2S. The more H2S we have and the more temperature we have, the faster this reaction is going to progress from mckinnonite to pyrotite to pyrite. Okay, pyrite is FES2, that's the end of the road, there's no more iron sulfur, a sulfide re uh, reaction after that. But uh, if, you, if you imagine the way the system works, the amine's flowing through the uh, absorber, picking up H2S and gaining in temperature due to the exothermic reaction between amine and H2S. And so the rich side of most refinery systems and several gas plants, we have a situation where we have hot, high H2S rich amine. Okay, the recipe is there to form the protective iron sulfide film that we want, the pyrotite film that we want. And that will continue right through most of the regenerator. But once the amine leaves the regenerator, we're now in a situation where we, we definitely have lots of temperature, but we're very low on H2S. Okay, and then the next piece of equipment the amine flows after it leaves the regenerator is the lean rich exchanger where we take that temperature away, we are now left with low temperature, low H2S concentration amine, you form mckinnonite. okay? And the more H2S you've left in the amine, even though it might seem like a high lean loading, 0 0.015 mole per mole for MDA, for example, um, it's not really that much H2S overall, certainly not as much compared to the rich side, and it's not enough to create a protective iron sulfide film. You just get this, or you get lean amine filters that look like this. If your lean amine filters are continually plugging off with black shoe polish, increase your regeneration. Drive the H2S out of the amine, you won't have this. No iron sulfide, no plugged filters, okay? So the key is you do not form a protective film on the lean side when you leave H2S in the amine. The only iron sulfide you form is mckinnonite. Here's a filter housing left into it. We see this black shoe polish all the time on lean amine. It's an easy fix. Do a better job of regenerating. Quick case study for you guys. As I said at the start of this video, we had a fouled lean rich exchanger. Okay, it had to do with the iron solubility and amine. My colleague Mike Sheelan did a full video on this. Go back in the archives of our YouTube channel. You can, I highly recommend you watch it. Okay, Mike is one of the best in the world in, in this subject. Um, here we have a lean rich exchanger where it was plugged, it was fouled, we couldn't flow amine through it, so we pulled the tubes out. Now you can see on the cool lean end here. There was an iron sulfide film on the tubes, but it was just mckinnonite. You could rub it off with your fingers. Definitely not a protective film. However, if we look at the hot lean in, there we go. Where the temperature was high, we did have a combination of H2S and high temperature. We could form pyrite at the start of the exchanger. In the middle of the exchanger, where the temperature was say medium, we formed pyrotite. And then when we go back to that cool lean end out, we're right back to mckinnonite. all right? A great example showing how as we decrease the temperature of our lean amine, we also decrease the ability to form a protective iron sulfide film to the point where you can't form a protective iron sulfide film. And that's why anyone who tells you that you should purposely leave H2S in your lean amine to form a protective iron sulfide film has no idea what they're talking about when it comes to iron sulfides. They have not done the research, they have not looked into it the way we have, and they're giving you wrong information. There's no such thing as a minimum lean loading. You can regenerate your amine right to 0 0.000 uh, ppm H2S and you will not form uh, any kind of corrosion. So, 
This is a, uh, as you can imagine, a bit of a controversial topic. People are like, well, all I can tell you is we had low lean loading and we had reboiler corrosion, so how do you answer that? That comes into uh, a whole other area as to how our amines are, are, are regenerated. If you guys are interested in us delving into that, we'd be more than happy to. Leave your comments in the section below here, and I'll be happy to give a video on how to re properly regenerate amine. Or if you have any other questions on iron sulfides or any other corrosion mechanisms, we can ta tackle that for you as well. Please uh, subscribe to our LinkedIn channel. No, le not LinkedIn. YouTube channel. <laughs> I do it every time. Uh, click the little bell icon. I don't know what it does, but it, our producer likes when you do that. And please join us again in uh, two weeks' time with another video on the Experts Network.